Welcome to the second Pro Tools lesson for Library at the Dock. In this lesson, we're going to get stuck into some editing. So you should load up your session that you have saved from last time. And we're going to start by chopping up this drum break here. And through the process of this, I'm going to teach you a few different things. So first of all, I'm going to teach you about your mouse pointer here. Now, at the moment, you'll notice that if you hover your mouse around the window, it changes from a hand to a little bracket here. And this is because we have the Smart Tool selected here. And the Smart Tool combines three different tools in one. So you can see here that we've got the Trim Tool, the Selector Tool, and the Grabber Tool. Now, if you hover your mouse over anything in the menu, it will bring up a little heading about what that thing is. Now, there's a bar that goes over these three tools here, which is called the Smart Tool, and that combines these three. And I generally always leave the Smart Tool on because it's much quicker. If you can learn how to use this, it will increase your workflow in Pro Tools. I'll talk you through these three tools separately. If you have it on the Trim Tool, that allows you to trim the end of a clip in or out, or the start of a clip in or out. The selector tool allows you to move the playhead somewhere, playhead being the point at which the track is going to play when you press spacebar. It will play from there. Uh, you can also click and drag to select the section. And for example, you could press delete and delete some different sections. And then the grabber tool is what you would use to move clips around. You click and drag, and you can also click away, and you can just click once to select a whole, an entire clip. So the Smart Tool combines these three different tools, the Trim Tool, the Selector Tool, and the Grabber Tool. And the way that the Smart Tool works is if you hover your mouse over the end of a clip, the mouse cursor will turn into the Trim Tool. So you have to have your mouse hovering over the end of a clip. If your mouse cursor is hovering on the top half of this clip, it will be the selector tool. If your mouse is hovering over the bottom half of this clip, it will be the grabber tool. So you see if I move my mouse cursor at the top, it becomes the selector, and I move my mouse cursor to the bottom, it becomes the grabber. And this is very, very useful because you can quickly select a section, you can quickly grab onto something and move it about. So just have a play around with that and you'll get used to these three different tools in one. Now for this next section, I'm going to be teaching you a few keyboard shortcuts to help us chop up this audio. So it's useful if you have a pen and paper, just pause this video and go and grab a pen and paper so you can write down some keyboard shortcuts. And then when you're using Pro Tools, you can just quickly refer back to this so that you can remember the keyboard shortcuts. So first of all, to chop up this audio, we're going to need to zoom in on some different parts. Now, I taught you in the last lesson that if you hold Option and you scroll with the wheel, you can zoom in and out on the audio. Now, you zoom in on the point where the playhead is. So if you want to zoom in on the end of this file, I'm going to position the playhead, which is this flashing line, and that is where the audio will play from if you press spacebar. I'm going to reposition this flashing line over towards the end. Now, if I hold down Option and I scroll with the wheel, the, it's going to zoom in on that section where the playhead is. So this is very useful if you want to start chopping up some audio and putting cu specific cuts in places in here, we'll need to zoom in to do that accurately. There's one other useful shortcut using the scroll wheel that you can do to help you navigate around. Now, if I zoomed in on the start of the clip here, but I decided that I actually wanted to go and look at something that is beyond the screen up here. Now, I could zoom out, click further and zoom in again, or I could grab this bar down the bottom and scroll across. A really useful shortcut is just to hold down Shift and scroll. And holding down shift and scroll, we'll scroll the window across. So you can kind of go through your WAV file like that. 
So you could you could scroll through and click a different point, and then that would become the point that zooms in and out. So let's put some cuts in this audio. And to chop this up accurately, we're going to need to zoom in on these different drum hits here. If you play this file, you'll be able to hear there's kicks, hi-hats, and snares. I've got my file set to loop. And if you right click on this play button up here, you can either select it to normal or to loop. Normal, when you press play, it will stop. I'm just going to turn mine up a little bit here. If you press loop, that drum break is going to loop over and over. I'm going to demonstrate to you how to cut up audio by chopping all these different drum hits out of this drum break here. Now, I can see that the first one here is this little hi-hat here. Now, if I was to just put a cut in like this, it wouldn't be very accurate because it's quite zoomed out. So what you want to do is click roughly where you think the start of that chop should be, then hold down Option and zoom in. And then once you're a bit more zoomed in, then I can see, yes, yeah, I was a little bit off there with my line. So I can move and place it more accurately. And then to perform a cut, we're going to press Command E and that will perform a cut there. And then we can either zoom back out or we can just hold down scroll at this zoom level and scroll forward. I'm going to reposition the playhead over here and again press Command D. And then we'll just scroll forward going through this whole file, repositioning the playhead and pressing Command D at the start of each hit on this drum break. Command D. Now, if you get the chop a little bit wrong, for example, watch this. I'm going to put a, a cut in here. I, I've obviously made a mistake there. Remember, we can just use the trim tool to move this cut around. So here, I'm just going to move it across. See? You can trim and move it across because we've got the smart tool selected. So we're just going to hover the mouse over that cut. Now, if, you, if I go to the grabber tool, it's going to select different parts now. Let's keep scrolling through and Command E again, cutting through all these different drum hits. There's one there, one there, and there we go. And then we can zoom back out and we can see what we've done. So we've got all the different drum hits there. If I use the grabber tool by hovering over the bottom half of these clips and I click on one of these, it's going to select just that hit. Now I can hear that that's a kick. So what I might do is I might split these up onto different channels. Let's, let's make separate tracks for kicks, hats, and snares. Now we need one more track. And remember the way we do that is go track new. And we're going to create one mono audio track. And let's call this one snare. So now we have snare. Let's rename this by double clicking on drums one and re let's call that kick. And we'll rename this one here, drums two, by double clicking on the name, and we'll call that hats. Now before I move these different drum hits onto the different tracks, I'm going to explain to you about slip and grid. Now if you look up in the top left, you'll see shuffle, spot, slip, and grid, and these are different modes that we can use to edit audio. Now we've been editing everything in slip mode, and slip means that you can click anywhere and the playhead will run smoothly like this. If we click grid, you'll notice that these, these gray lines became a more solid blue. And if we click into the window with this selector tool, the playhead will only go onto these blue lines. And this is our grid. Now, if we want to change our grid, I think it's best if we change up here for minutes and seconds to bars and beats. And you'll be able to see now that Instead of everything being in minutes and seconds, it's in bars and beats. And we can now change the tempo of this. I want to try to find roughly what the tempo is of this drum break. Now we can do that by changing the tempo up here. And you can see the default tempo is set to 120. 
can see that up here and you can also see it down here next to this little red triangle and you can actually double click on that and change the tempo there now at the moment this track is set to be in ticks and that means that if we change the tempo all of these clips and cuts are going to move with that tempo change so for example if i change this tempo to 100 we'll see what happens all of these clips moved along with the grid and i'm going to undo that because what we actually want is we actually want to change this to samples and what that means is that these clips will stay independent of the grid change. So if I change this now to 100, we'll see what happens. The grid moves, but these clips stayed in their place. And what that means is we can move the grid so that the BPM matches this drum break. So I think that it needs to be a little bit slower. I'm going to do it this time by double clicking on that little red arrow. Let's go to 90 and we'll see what happens. So what I'm trying to do is align this, this dark blue line here, which is the bar marker. You can see there's four beats in this bar. I'm trying to align that up to the end of this audio. So it needs to be even slower. So let's go to 85 BPM, even slower, 80. And you can see that that's almost there. We'll go to 78, that's too far. So 79 almost there and if I click on the end here and I zoom in you can see that it needs to come back a little bit so 79.5 and I'm happy with that that's close enough if you zoom out that looks pretty good now at the moment the grid is set to to snap to each beat within that bar and you can go up here and you can see that it's set to quarter notes if I set it to one bar it's only going to snap to the bar line so quarter notes means that it's going to split that up into quarters but i actually want to split that up down to 16th notes which is pretty much going to pick up every single beat in this drum break now we're ready to start moving these clips around to the different channels and the reason that i had the grid set is because it means that we can actually move these around and they will snap onto the grid so first up Let's identify what each thing is and move them down. So, press if you use the grabber tool and, and click on the bottom half of any of these clips, it's going to select that little clip. So, let's just select the first one and press play. Okay, so that sounds like a kick. So, we'll click and drag down onto kick. Let's click and select the next one. Sounds like a hat. So, we'll click and drag that down onto hats. Now, you can move it around, but just make sure that it aligns onto that grid. Now we can't see snare down there because we've run out of screen space. So remember, we can resize these different track heights and a quick way to resize all tracks at once is to hold down option and right click on one. So if I hold down option and right click and let's do medium, it's gonna make them all medium. We can do make them a little bit larger. Let's go large. Uh, I like medium because it's, it's less far to drag. Okay, so let's click on this one and listen. So that sounds like a snare. Now, you see I dragged that down, but it didn't move back onto the grid. So I'm just gonna move it forward and back until it jumps onto that grid. Okay, so that's a hat. Let's move it onto the closest grid line. Now that's actually a little ghost snare. I'm gonna move that down and put it onto snare. Kick, move that onto the grid. Another kick, move that onto the grid. Snare. Hat. And a little ghost kick, move that on. Now, if I click and select on this bar marker here and drag back there, that is going to play all this audio on a loop. So let's hear what that sounds like. So now what we have is we've got independent separate control over the kicks, the hats and the snares in this drum break. Now you'll notice that when I was playing the drum break then there it sounded like there was a little bit of a few glitches and that there was a bit of sort of silence within that drum break. 
And you can see that's because some of these clips are a little bit short, some of these ghost clips. Now we can fix that by speeding up the BPM. Now that we've got these roughly in place, we can actually speed up the BPM to close these gaps here. Now we're going to need to turn off uh, the elastic audio on these tracks, which is enabled by default. Let's just turn off none, disable elastic audio. Elastic audio is a time stretch algorithm. And if, if this is set to ticks and we change the BPM, it's going to time stretch all these clips, which we don't want. So you can see that all of these new tracks are set to ticks, which is good because it means that when we change the BPM, these clips are going to stay on the grid and move with the grid. But the ends of the clips are not. The ends of the clips, if we make this faster, the end of this clip will move closer towards that grid line and that bit of silence will be closed up. So let's just do something quite drastic and we'll move this all the way up to 100 and see what happens. You can see that it's almost closed up that gap there. Let's, move, let's zoom in a little bit more and we can even go a little bit, for, let's go to 105. Ah, and there we go. You can see that that has closed up that gap at the end. Now, it has also made some of the other clips in this timeline extend over the other beats. And what we can do is let's just use our trim tool to click and drag back and trim off the end so that nothing overlaps here. There we go. And then let's have a listen again. So now that's sounding a lot better. We've got no gaps in the audio. So that concludes lesson two in Pro Tools for Library at the Dock. Before you finish, make sure once again, you go to file and save to save your work. And I hope you can join me for lesson three when we're going to build this track out a little bit more and learn about mixing, mastering, and exporting your audio.